Thank you for watching today's special holiday episode of Uncovering Oklahoma Weekly. I got a fantastic guest today. Uh, I'm going to introduce Brad Stump of Black Mesa Brewing. Come on, Brad. Hello, Dennis. How Hello, are you? Hello, Brad. Thanks for joining me. Uh, with the holidays coming up, uh, let's. People like to drink during the holidays, so let's. Certainly. But first, let's before we get on to a little bit more about uh, what brewery. What beers you guys got brewing? Uh, let's go ahead and start. Uh, how did uh, Black Mesa get started? Yeah, certainly. So uh, we started back in 2012. Um, at that time, there was a brewing cooperative in Oklahoma City called OK City Brewing. And we were one of the original members of that cooperative and, and brewed with some other brewers, including Red Bud, Anthem, and also Mustang Brewing Company. <laughs> Uh, so uh, how did the name Black Mesa come about? Any Half-Life reference in there? So, so there isn't a Half-Life reference. Uh, but we have certainly gotten that question quite a bit. Uh, I know it's a, a very popular game, uh, but we take our name from uh, the highest point in Oklahoma, uh, Black Mesa, which is out in the western end of the Panhandle. What is your favorite beer to make? Our favorite beer to make. Well, we we kind of like beer, um, and so they're they're all fun to make, um, and and certain beers just present uh, different challenges. Um, you know, I would say I, I don't know. I mean, one of my favorites is our double ESB. It's just a, a really big beer. The aroma in that beer is is pretty incredible. I mean, you know, a, a brewery smells almost mm -hmm. like a, a bread factory. Um, and so that beer, just with all the grain, just really rich aromas in the brewery on the day that we brew that. So, so what was what would be the like the hardest one for you guys to brew? Um, our our head brewer Chris Sanders would definitely tell you that the Kolsch is the most difficult to brew. Um, mm -hmm. and German beers, huh? It, yeah. it it is it is, and it's a yeah it's a it's a German style ale. It's a five point two percent ABV, and, and it's it's at the blonder end of the spectrum as far as beers go, and. And any home brewer or professional brewer could tell you that, that it's the most delicate beers um, that are really the most difficult to brew because just it, it allows some space for any flaws to shine through and, and you've really got to have those recipes dialed in on those lighter beers. Do you have a preference in hops? Um, you know, I mean, hops are just, we match uh, the hops to beers. And so it just depends on what we're brewing. I mean, for example, um, Kolsch has some similarities to a Pilsner. Uh, so we use a lot of saws hops in that. Um, but we also use um, crystal hops, which give it, you know, a little bit, a, a little bit of a floral nose to it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and on our ESB, I mean, we're just going to use more um, kind of hops from the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. Summit, Glacier, some hops like that. Any tips for budding brewers out there? My only tip is just to be persistent. I know it's, it's, a, it's a difficult craft and there's a lot of work. I mean, it, it takes the same amount of effort to brew on a homebrew system and brew like a five gallon um, batch of beer as it does for us to brew a 15, or a 15 barrel batch of beer, which is roughly, brewers talk in barrels, um, a 15 barrel batch of beer is gonna be roughly 450 gallons. Mm -hmm. And it's really the same amount of work to brew either size uh, because of the equipment that we use. Um, but, and then not only is it, you know, work that takes almost all day long to brew, but then you're tending to the beer, make sure it's fermenting correctly over the next few days, and then you're conditioning the beer. So from start to finish, it's a, you know, 21 to 25 day process. And I know it can be pretty disheartening if that very first home brew batch doesn't go well. And now you have five gallons of beer that you work so hard and, and, and just tastes so awful. <laughs> right. right. So I, I would say just, yeah, stick with it and be persistent and don't let that uh, first batch of beer determine uh, your, your brewing career. Mm -hmm. or <laughs> Uh, do you have uh, any tours going on at your brewery? We don't at the moment. Um, in in true Oklahoma fashion, um, we, we have a, a short but storied history. The the original co-op that we started in was destroyed by the May 31st, 2013 storm. Mm. Um, so it, it wasn't the large May 20th storm that went through more. Um, but just 11 days later, uh, the, the storm that caused some damage in El Reno and Shawnee um, dumped enough water on the cooperative that it collapsed the roof Ooh. and yes and, and damaged a lot of the equipment um, that cooperative uh, did not come back did not get rebuilt as a cooperative 
Um, and so in order to keep the business going, we have now partnered with the O'Fallon Brewery. They're outside St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we do all of our brewing up there uh, for the time being, uh, but we are certainly uh, We're hoping... We're coming back here. Uh, yes, yes. It's, it's always been our goal to yeah. get back to Oklahoma City and establish our own brewery. Um, and it's just taken some time to do that, but we hope that uh, that becomes a reality in, in 2016 or 2017. Was brewing for you like a... Something it was like a calling, or just kind of something you just kind of fell into. Yeah, so uh, you know, Chris Sanders, uh, my partner in the in in the brewery, is our head brewer, and so he definitely has the technical expertise. But mm -hmm. I've always been a craft beer enthusiast, mm -hmm. um, and like to try everything that I can try out there. And, and and I think it was just it was a matter of just having a lot of respect for Chris. He's a he's a really talented brewer, um, and then when the cooperative opened its doors. Um, I was just convinced that, that it, you know, with his ability, he was brewing beers that, that would do really well in Oklahoma and, and could even stand up on a national level. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, the, the cooperative just made it, you know, feasible for us to, to start a small brewery. And, and uh, we went for it and gained some traction from there. And yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, we're actually going to sample some beers. And we're going to uh, go ahead and talk about some holiday recommendations. So. All right, and we're back. And now for the fun part of the show, or at least fun for us, because we're in the tasting. All right, so Brad, what do you got for us to taste first? All right, guys, we'll start you out with our Kolsch. And we've so even... this is your um, German beer, huh? It is. A, Kolsch is a is a German style beer. As you can see, it pours. Oh yeah, it pours. Nice up. and light, super crisp, drinkable beer. And we'll give that just a second. Look to, at that. Yeah. Second to yeah, settle. It's like a nice quaffing beer, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bet. And you'll notice. Yeah, it, I even brought some traditional Kolsch glassware with us. It's mm -hmm. uh, the German name for that perfectly cylindrical glass. It's oh. called a Stonga. Stonga? Uh, yes, and, and basically the idea behind this glass, e each glass uh, serves a purpose for the beer that it's served in. Uh, in. In the case of this one, it's just to keep portion sizes a little bit smaller. Um, Kolsch is one of those, you know, e each beer also has an optimum temperature that are going to, you know, tr mm -hmm. uh, do the best for the flavors. and Brings out the floral notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you bet. So the idea... Um, for a Kolsch, that ideal temperature is actually pretty cool. I mean, you want it served at 36, 37 degrees, really crisp. So the idea behind this traditional Stonga is just to make sure that portion sizes stay small so that you're always drinking the beer when it's, okay, when so it's so crisp yeah, so you don't and cool. Have a nice, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's clever. Yeah. All right, uh, you want to get some for... Uh, John, you want, you'll let you take the first step. <laughs> All right, well, I'll happily be the guinea pig. <laughs> Yeah, it does taste like a, it kind of tastes a little bit like a Dunkel. You think so? Like yeah. Like Munich Dunkel. Yeah. Sorry, I'm drinking it all now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. Here, right. you want me to, sorry, we just have a, oh yeah. yeah. We'll finish off that bottle here right, I'll before we I'll move on. Yeah. And if you want to go ahead and, did you see the uh, logo there? It's a, this is their logo. The pretty nice little cup. Mm. Yeah, no, we're proud of this. This is the first uh, branded glassware we've done, and, and Jason Pauly is our graphic design artist. He's, a, he's an artist uh, based in OKC and, and has done several murals around the city, and uh, so we're, we're thrilled that he... Yeah, I was, uh, I was noticing the artwork looks really awesome. So what, what food pairings would you recommend with this beer? Mm -hmm. Since we got the holidays coming up. Right. Right. I, I know that, you know, with Thanksgiving just around the corner, I was thinking of, of these term, you know, these beers in terms of which course with my family, you know, mm -hmm. traditional family Thanksgiving meal, what I, you know, what I like to pair this with. And, and of course, with any food pairings, the, the idea is you either want to, you know, complement that food by, uh, you, you know, having similar flavors present or, you know, the exact opposite. You, you want to something that's going to contrast that food. Mm -hmm. And so for this beer, um, you know, we think that we have a, a pretty special um, stuffing recipe in our family. And, you know, stuffing's a pretty filling, um, you know, bready, heavier food. And mm -hmm. so what's really nice about this beer is just really crisp, light. It's going to clean up that, that, you know, 
the heaviness of the stuffing, but at the same time, it's got a really nice bready aroma to it mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. going to complement it. So yeah, that, yeah, it's uh, very nice. Yeah, so I mean that that'd be my recommendation for Thanksgiving, and then I don't know about your house, but our our uh, our Thanksgiving menu looks a lot like our Christmas menu. Mm -hmm. We we bring out the the stuffing recipe again, so this certainly works. Uh, four course turkey dinner. Yeah, four. You you got it. You got it right <laughs> right on into the new year. So, uh, so what you got up next? Uh, next we have our ESB. And I apologize, guys. I just brought one ESB glass here, but this is a traditional English tavern glass. Huh? Yeah, you got it here. We'll leave a little bit in the bottle in okay. case somebody wants to try, I will try the bottle. bottle. So, John, you can have the cup. All right. Yeah, so this, I used to have one of these way back in the day. Yeah, yeah so this is a dimpled pint glass. Um, you know, a, a traditional glass. Uh, you know, in, or ESBs are an English style beer. And so this is a traditional English style pint glass. Um, and the idea behind this. Um, what you're trying to highlight with this beer, it's not actually uh, um, any flavor or aroma characteristics, it's simply the color of the beer. You want those dimples um, to cast light at different angles through the beer and just Gives show off that, that amber and copper color. Some, yeah, it does help you can see different yeah. shades. Especially with our system. studio lights, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it even has a uh, stamp on there saying in the Imperial Pint. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And the, the Queen has measured it. Wow, that's nice. Thanks. So. Thank you. Yeah, so this one, th this is probably the beer that we're, we're most well known for at this point in time. Um, this beer won the gold medal at the World Beer Cup um, in 2014. Mm. So for, for the ESB why. style, I should, I yeah. should say. I, yeah. I can see why. Mm. So what would you recommend, uh, again, food pairings for this mm. one? So f for this one, um, we like to make a... It, like a kale salad that, that kind of has a, a honey mustard dressing to it. And then we usually cut up some butternut squash, um, top it with butternut squash. And th this beer, the, the, the idea behind ESBs is they're really well-balanced beer. So they've got a little bit of a bitter bite to it, but it's also a malty beer um, that, that should balance out that bitterness. And I think it goes really well with like a, a, a kale salad, something like that, because it, it kind of complements the bitterness of those of, of greens. Um, but then it's also hearty um, and just provides a nice contrast. So. Well, I noticed that it has a nice kind of a sweet aftertaste after the bitterness hits you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, certainly. No, it's a it's a so it's a full bodied beer. It's yeah, a it's a very pleasant aftertaste. Yeah. All right, so uh, Brad, you got uh, got two more final beers for us to try. All right, so next, since we just tried our ESB, we'll move on to our double ESB. Um, and this one, guys, when a brewer talks about doubling something, to us that just means that we're doubling the amount of grain that goes in the recipe. So this double ESB, all the same ingredients of our ESB, um, but of course the grain is what the yeast is going to eat to produce alcohol. And so, whereas our, our ESB goes wow. about 6% ABV, this one's going to go uh, just shy of 10. It's about 9.5%. So you've gotten about twice the malt that you're working with, huh? Yeah, yeah, certainly. And you'll, you'll notice, I wow. mean, it just, it changes the character of the beer mm. completely. I mean, this just, it, it oh, certainly it dampens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, you know, the malt aroma certainly yeah, comes up in it. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, cheers, John. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, we didn't do that. Cheers. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, we should have did that earlier, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Just don't forget to do that during the holidays. Mm -hmm. Wow. That has a nice, full flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say, I mean, we, we definitely wanted people to make the connection to our ESB with this beer. Mm -hmm. um, I, double ESB is not a recognized style. I'd say if you wanted to pin a style on this beer, it would be similar to an English barley wine. That, that sounds so, right, yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't had many barley wines, but this tastes amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers. It's it's definitely one of my yeah, favorites. I think this is my favorite so yeah. far. So far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I'm inclined to agree with John. Okay. Um, well, of course, now let's talk about food. <laughs> so, again, what would you recommend with yeah, this one? Yeah, what would we eat with this thing? Yeah, so, I mean, for me, this is a beer that, that would pair really well with turkey. The, the main attraction, right, especially those dark meat cuts. Mm -hmm. Like, it, you know, the, the richest 
pieces of meat there. You just want something really full bodied um, like this double ESB. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now this is, um, so this is kind of like a barley wine you said, huh? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. So in this, this for us, this was the very first beer that we ever put in bottles. I mean, it's nice that we have all of our beers in bottles now. Mm -hmm. um, at the time we started, uh, both our ESB and Kolsch were draft only. Um, and this was our, yeah. And, and this is the first one in bottles, huh? And this was, so yeah, this, our this double was kind of, kind of the flagship of huh? the bottle. It, it was, it was, it, as, as far as our special release beers go and our seasonal beers, yeah. Well, I can see, I can see why you guys had such good success with it. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. All right, and you got one final beer for us to try. So this is, this is our take on a Doppelbach, and we call it Alexander Super Tramp. Um, if you're familiar with the Doppelbach style, I mean, it just literally means double bock. Uh, so again, a, a doubled recipe. So again, this is a pretty big beer. This one goes about 10%. Um, and Doppelbachs are usually pretty easy to, to spot on the shelves. Uh, for the most part, the names usually wow. end. Oh, it's a nice red, red color. Yeah, it's almost like a, a wine, like a red wine. Almost. Yeah. Uh -huh. So sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no problem, no problem. Um, the, the, the names end in A-T-O-R, so like Celebrator, Salvatore, some of the popular um, German Doppelbachs, uh, which are lager-style beers. Uh, for this beer, um, we, we wanted to play with it a little bit, and so we actually made this into an ale. Um, mm. and, so, and, and what we thought would be interesting about doing that is, for the most part, lagers usually have a, a really clean, dry mouthfeel to them. Um, by by making this into an ale, uh, ales tend to inject some fruity esters into the beer, and we just thought it would be fun to play with since there are so many dark malts in this beer, just to see if we could play up some of those dark fruit notes, like dark plum, dark cherry, um, things like that. So yeah, that's, it can kind of taste yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so that, it has kind of a, a roasted kind of a floral note to it. Mm -hmm. It smells pretty good. That's, yeah, so that's why we named this one Alexander Super Tramp and didn't stick with the uh, the, the traditional ATOR -O ending. I guess that mm. that being the case, you didn't have to wait as long as you would with it as being really cold temperatures with the lager. Y yeah, no, you're you're right. You're right. We we didn't lager this beer. I mean, it did take us a little bit longer than than say our culture ESB to mm -hmm. to make, but but just by a few days. That's not too bad. Yeah. And this is amazing too, and the color is amazing. Mm -hmm. Look at that. All right. Well, yep. thank you, Brad. Oh, oh yeah, wait, we, we got yeah. we got to find out what we got what what to eat with this now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Before I can kick you out of here. Uh, all <laughs> right. Yeah. So so another recipe we're proud of, and and my family is a is a cranberry relish. Mm -hmm. uh, make our cranberry relish homemade uh, with fresh cranberries. Usually include some orange rind and things like that. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, yeah, re re really know. nice. Mm. And I think, you know, I mean, for me, it's something that I, I like that cranberry relish, like kind of after the main course of the meal, but before dessert. Um, and, and yeah, I think this beer, you know, we're, we're starting to get larger beers, so you, you want those kind of stacked towards the end of the meal, right, as the flavors get more full. Mm. And I think the, the cranberry notes would just be a nice, like, bright contrast to this type it, of it beer. It would be. So would you consider this one of the heavier... One of the darker beers or one of the heavier beers that you make? Yeah, it, it certainly, I mean, it, as far as alcohol by volume, this is definitely uh, one of the biggest beers we make. But um, it also has, of all the beers we make, this beer probably has the most residual sweetness to it. So you'd be surprised for being one of the heaviest beers that we make. It's also one of the easiest drinking mm. as well. There's a little, a little bit of tartness in there as well as the sweetness. Mm -hmm. Very good. You have to get some of this and try it. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, Brad, thank you so much for coming on, being a part of the Uncovering Oklahoma Weekly. Uh, before we go, you got a website. Uh, you want to tell people where they can check out if they want more information, where they can find Black Mesa Brew and Beer Set? Yeah, certainly. We have our, our website's uh, www.blackmesabrewing.com. Um, we also, you can find us on social media, both Instagram and Twitter. Our handles are at Black Mesa Brew. Um, and then on Facebook, Black Mesa Brewing Company. Anything else you want people to know before, before we leave today? 
Uh, oh man, you, you you caught me off guard. I guess just uh, our the the latest beer up for us. Uh, we're coming out with it, every winter. We do a coffee stout collaboration with Elemental Coffee mm -hmm. Roasters, mm -hmm. um, in in downtown Oklahoma City. Yeah, we're familiar with uh, that. Okay, all right. Well, this this year's collaboration is called Los Naranjos. Um, we we brew our stout. Uh, they roast coffee beans for us this year. We selected a Colombian coffee bean that has mm -hmm. an orange essence to it. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so we so we brew the beer, ferment it, and then we take the beans that Elemental roasted for us this year. is about fifty five pounds, mm. um, and then we condition our stout on those coffee beans, and and that is uh, actually just hit the market, just came out on draft um, a couple of weeks ago. Well, that sounds amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah. What was it called again? Los Naranjos. It's named after uh, both the farm in Colombia mm -hmm. uh, that, that it's uh, that the beans are grown on, and that's also the name of the bean. So Los Naranjos. Los Naranjos. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. And for and for any Spanish speakers out there, I mean, it just literally means oranges. Mm. And so it, it, yeah. Interesting. That sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah it's, well, I have to keep in touch with you guys and figure yeah. out whenever that stuff's, you know, on tap. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. We hope you do. All right. Well, thank you, Brad. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah, you for thank watching. You uh, be sure to go to uncoveringoklahoma.com and see more episodes. Thank you. Good night. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys.